going to do in, in this uh, hour or so is make up a bag from a half yard summer collection. Um, but what I wanted to show you is how different different bags look uh, when you wait, make them from different fabrics and how you can adapt them. So the bag that I'm going to make, this is my half yard summer collection. And if you've got any questions or anything, do come and comment. It'd be lovely to hear from you. Thanks for waiting for me. Um, half Yard Summer Collection is literally a collection of projects from other Half Yard books. Half, my Half Yard books, I think there's nine in total there. And um, they're like compilate. This is a compilation of some of the favourites. So if you've already, oh, hello again, Catherine. Hello, Dee. Hi, Jean. Hi, Pauline. Um, if you've already got my Half Yard books, then you've probably got these anyway. Um, but just to give you an idea, everything is made with less than half a yard of fabric and because it's taken from so many different books which are themed, then you've got lots of different variations of projects. So some from half a yard heaven as these are, some from home, some from vintage, half a yard bags and purses. Um, so I'll just have a quick flick through and show you uh, what we're actually going to be making, which isn't that one. Oh, we've got jam jar covers, that's what we're going to make. Um, tea cozies. Anyway, that's the book. Um, this is the bag that we're going to make. Now for this one, I've called it Ladies Day because it's rather posh. Um, thanks Joel, I'm fine. Um, I used a faux leather and then I covered it in lace and I actually spray glued the lace to the leather and then this is just the faux leather at the top and for the handle. Um, for my bag, I'm going to use a nautical fabric because I'm in the mood for a little bit of sunshine and seaside. Not, not getting it but you know and then for the flap I'm just using a plain navy so it's going to have a very different look um, I will put the slider and the um, the rectangle rings on here but I'm not going to use the clasp like this I'm going to use a magnetic snap because I think maybe for the first time if you're, if you're bag making and you do a bit of sewing already you've probably got magnetic snaps so you probably haven't got um, the tongue clasp type of thing so that's what we're going to make so let's get on with it Oh, I'm also, the bag in the book, I used um, Decavilla's interfacing, so it's really quite stiff. This one I'm going to use Bosal, so it's a little bit softer. So I have my two pieces of fabric. These measure, measure, measure 16 inches by 12, and that's for the outside. I've got two pieces of fabric cut to the same size for the lining. No pockets in this one, but you can add pockets if you wanted to before you make the lining up. And then my flap is going to be in um, just a plain navy. So this is how we're going to look, like that, like that. Oh, I'm not talking properly today, I don't know what's going on with my voice. Hi Tracy, hi again Angela. Um, Lynette, I'm non-stop today, yes it is my second round, second bag of the day. Um, so that's the flap and I've got two pieces for that. And on this one, I will give that a press, I put some Bosal foam on the back. Now Bosal is nice and squishy and easy to work with but it's firm. And it creases, but you can iron it, and that's the beauty of it. Um, hi, Sarah. So let's let's start with the bag, the outside of the bag, and, and making the shapes. It's got a rounded bottom. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is to round the bottom. So I'm going to fold this in half. All of the measurements are in the book, but I'll try and give you a, a brief guide. If you have maybe a three and a half inch circle template then you can use that we're just going to cut a curve around there so I made a few of these so I'm, I'm just gonna just gonna go for it just gonna cut it like that but a small plate or something would suffice and then hello Sam I'm going to <laughs> Jenny messed my first bag don't you love predictive text um, I need to put two little darts in here. So the way that I'm going to do that is to fold this in half and mark it. So sides over to the base and we'll crease that. And if I can find my pen, I'm just going to mark say an inch and a half up here and cut out a little v-shape there which measures about half an inch across and then fold the whole thing in half again so i'm doing this quite quickly because i was a little bit late so it's a good job we're not having a sew along and then cut the same from here so 
that's my shape. Then I'm going to lay this on my cutting board and measure one inch along. Not typical, isn't it? I'll, I'll turn that over so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I'd normally do this with my rotary cutter, but I don't have it with me. From the side to the top, one inch, and just taper that down. And then we'll cut those pieces off. And that's basically the shape of the bag. So we'll keep that nice and round. We can again fold this in half to make sure everything is symmetrical. And chop that one off. And then we use this as a template to make another one from the second piece of fabric. So, like so. Just cut out the V shapes. And then I'll need two more pieces exactly the same shape again for the lining. So that's that. Let's come down here and the same on this side. There. Right, I just got to show as well, this is, I think it's quite um, a smart style of bag. But the fabric's a bit more like you'd expect to find a beach bag. So I think it's a, a nice combination. Something to, something to go out in the evening when you're on your holes, maybe. When you still want to feel beachy. So I'm going to lay one of these over the top of my lining. And again, use that as a template. So anybody going on holiday? I don't know if I ever will again, to be honest. My um, my son's going to uh, the Scilly Isles later on this year. He says he it's as <laughs> it's as close to abroad as he can feel like he can go. But I'd uh, never paid too much attention to it before, actually. But it looks a lovely place. Ever been? Do you live there? Long way away, though, isn't it? Well, from me, anyway. Not if you live in Cornwall, obviously. Um, so again, just cutting around the shape. And remember to cut the little V's into the darts as well. Hello, Elaine. Oh, go on, Lynette, but thank you very much. So cut into the V's like so. So that's the outside and the lining. Now at this point, if you wanted to add a pocket, um, where are we? put a pocket on the inside couldn't we let's have a because I've got an extra little bit of fabric this is this wasn't planned but I thought while we're here um, so if you wanted to add any pockets to them at this stage on the inside so there's my lining that's going to form a little bit of a base so if you're going to put a pocket on don't put it too far down here I think centrally just across the middle would be fine and I'm just going to put a little patch pocket there um, just to somewhere to keep my phone and my keys maybe so I'll measure this in just a second because this is a bit ad hoc it's what happens when you sew though isn't it you uh, you start thinking oh I could do that well that's a nice big pocket I'll do right let's cut that down this it's a little bit too big to be honest I'll, just, I'll give you the measurements of this in just a second because obviously this won't be in the book that's a bit more like it right so this one is measuring in at 10 inches by about six inches like so all right just gonna move my mat out of the way now I reckon I'm on your phone but not your laptop I don't know why Right, we'll make we'll do the pocket first. I have got red thread in my machine, but 
it'll be fine red white and blue goes very well together doesn't it so I'm going to sew these two pieces together um, all the way around but leave a gap in the bottom so I can turn it because this is just going to be a patch pocket so I don't normally pin with smaller items like this one I'm using about a quarter of an inch seam allowance just making sure I was the right way around because I want to leave the turning gap at the bottom so into the corner straight across the top have you found me yet Erica are you there on your laptop and down the side And this could be a project for a beginner, you know, because I know a lot of, there are some very clever and very experienced sewers out there. Um, and as you know, there are so many people that are brand new, that want some inspiration. Um, maybe you think that um, curtain making or dressmaking is where you want to end up, but you find it a bit of a challenge at the moment. I think smaller projects like this are the kind of things that keep you motivated and keep you going because they're achievable and they're not using up very much fabric just going to turn this pocket the right side out and then we'll give it a press and you don't need anything special you know you don't need a fancy sewing machine for any of the projects in the book um, you only need a straight stitch so even the most basic of sewing machine that you've inherited or you've bought or you've borrowed should be fine oh Sam's going to Scotland at the end of May sorry at the end of October can't wait I haven't been to Scotland for a long time oh I've got my my second vaccination on the on the 30th of May looking forward to that the first one made me arm ache though felt absolutely fine but I felt like I've been punched in the arm for a while right I give this a press wearing most of my scraps today what are you wearing today Debbie Shaw I'm wearing my scraps uh, let's just that an iron like so. Erica's still on the phone. Oh, okay. <laughs> I had a lot of lives going on today, haven't I? So I was a bit late today. I haven't even changed my frock. So I'm just folding in the opening. I'm not going to sew that because when I put the patch onto the inside of the bag, that'll, oh, we can't see what I'm doing. That'll automatically sew it closed. So a little opening there. So I've just folded the edges in so that it matches up. Then I'm going to top stitch across here and then we'll pop it onto the bag. That's a nicer side. So with top stitching I can lengthen the stitch because it's not a seam, it doesn't have to be secure. And away we go. And this is, it looks nice, but it also holds the layers together. So it helps the lining to sit flat. Let's chop off me end bit there. Nice to see you too as well. Um, Ancelator, is that how you pronounce your name? It's a lovely name. That's there. I'm going to iron that as well, because that got a little bit creased up in transit, didn't it? don't like to work with crease fabric I don't know about you I've got the big iron today as well I'm using Bosal so it needs a lot of steam so my little iron I usually use isn't quite up to the job so we'll place this centrally measure that for accuracy if you wish and I'm going to stick a couple of pins in there Uh, just to hold that in place like so and then we'll sew round the bottom three sides coffee oh that would be nice thank you yeah. my special cup yeah it's hot thank you oh it is <laughs> anybody else oh don't ask you know you, you get requests all right so a couple of pins in there <laughs> 
it's so good you i spent all day down here on a saturday either filming or, or something or other and he brings me so many coffees and i'm so very rarely drink them especially with the lives because i just talk so much right so here i'm going to sew around the bottom three uh, the sides and the bottom and then i think we'll have a dividing line down the center so I've got two pockets. So go backwards and forwards a couple of times at the top of the pocket to secure it. And that means that the stitches aren't going to come undone if you're forcing something in there. But we'll start with the needle down as you pivot around the corner. <laughs> Can we have a vodka? Gary, we've had a request for vodka, please. Can you imagine if that was vodka? I'd be making a lovely bag. <laughs> Stitches would be all over the place. Should I tell you something? When um, with all of these half yard books, the the first one um, <laughs> of the series is called Half Yard Heaven, and um, Martin and Caroline, who are Mr. and Mrs. Search Press, were saying, you know, we've done so many of these half yard books. Maybe it's about time to put them to bed. Um, so I said, okay, you know, that, that's fine, that's understandable, we've done so many of them, but can we do one last book? So, because <laughs> the first one was Half Yard Heaven, I, I, just, half, I thought Half Yard Hell, and just make lots of things that nobody really wants to make, <laughs> very badly, maybe after a vodka, <laughs> imagine. No biscuits yet, Angela. Um, right, working on the biscuits. So I'm going to draw a line halfway down, I think it would be a bestseller. It's like my idea of Fifty Shades of Grey fabric. That didn't go down too well with Search Press, but I, I, th I think it would go down well with you. Right, so a line straight down the centre. I'm using a heat erasable pen. So do test your fabric first because on some fabrics they can bleach. They're not meant for fabric, although they do work very well on a lot of fabrics. And if you're marking something within the seam allowance, then you're not going to see it anyway. But I, I use friction pens quite a lot. So again, backwards and forwards at the top of the pocket and then straight down. Now there's enough room inside the bag. So I'm trying to avoid the iron as I'm going from one camera to another, which is a bit awkward. Um, you can at this point put another pocket on the other side if you wish. That could be a letterbox zipped pocket. Um, if you wanted to do that, that, that's up to you. And um, there are different techniques in the book as well. I'm not sure about letterbox zip, but there are different techniques in different books anyway that you can put pockets in if you wish. Right, let's um, put the outside of the bag together. So this is where I'm going to put the Bosal foam. Uh, ironing pad back up again. Now if you're not familiar with this, it's fabulous stuff. Um, it gives your bag, <laughs> it's very long, um, a bit of stability but it's still easy to sew through. So it it, it does, you, you can manipulate it. So when I'm turning the bag inside out, um, it's easy to do that but it is nice and firm. What it does like is a lot of steam to apply it. Jill, I hope you're not late because you'll be doing housework. You know how I feel about Saturdays. Um, so lots of steam. Oh, there we go. So I'm not I'm not ironing over the bosal. And I'm ironing through the fabric onto the bosal with a hotter than a hot a hotter <laughs> a hotter iron as your fabric will take. So I'll just get the centre stuck down and then cut out the shape. So, we'll cut out those little V shapes in a minute. We'll sew the darts in. And we'll need this on the front and the back. If you wanted to use this on a fabric um, that you can't iron, like faux leathers um obviously do a little patch first but you can actually I, I, actually you can iron the bosal from the bosal side again if you've got lots of steam so the the steam penetrates through it so if you've got a laminated fabric that you want to use and put bosal on the back then again from the back lots of steam 
like that just make sure it travels through all right so now i can iron right up to the edge when you do turn your bag inside out and you'll see this later it will wrinkle a lot um oh that's all right jill if you garden and make the most of it while we've got the weather um but it's quite nice because you can just give it a blast of steam afterwards and the creases literally just drop out so let's cut out the v-shapes that's where the dots are going to be and let you come then we'll do the same with the second side so i think with this bag particularly you, you could make it in so many different fabrics um, and give it a completely different look you know if it's an, any kind of cotton you could use so if you've got even like a poplin which is a lighter weight of cotton or even a lawn but you fall in love with that design and that pattern when you put the backing on it and it gives it that stability it doesn't matter so i'm, I'm thinking i don't know spots and stripes and florals or planes same thing for evening something for gift wear if you're dressmaking how about making one to match your frock got any weddings coming up are we allowed to go to weddings I, I can't keep up with what we can and can't do so i just don't do anything but um if you've got a wedding coming up then you can make a nice decent sized bag to keep your confetti and your hanky and whatever else you take to your weddings um but you can make it really dressy all right almost there with the padding and the wadding and the cutting I'm just hoping I don't need any more of that and I'll put it over the front of the counter. Let's snip into the into the V-shape here. And here. I do enjoy gardening, Jill, but I, I like doing it once. You know, I love it when the garden's looking nice and the weather's nice and you can sit outside and and enjoy it. We've got quite a large um, fish pond and the fish, say, well, they're always hungry, but whenever you walk past, they all come swimming up, you hear them flapping around. And then there's the wildlife. And, oh, we've got we've got um, blackbirds and thrushes in, oh, loads of sparrows um, in the garden at the moment. But with the gardening, it's the actual doing of it. So I love it to look nice, but doing the gardening, if it had just stay as it was the first time you do it, that's fine. But it goes and grows, doesn't it? Hello, Linda and Mabel Thought, Welcome along. All right, good old press. Just making sure that's stuck down. We need to make the flap. So lining pieces, outer pieces, you're all ready. Let's make the flap. Now, again, I've already put the bosal onto my outer fabric I'll just give that a press it is foam so I'm not too worried about damaging my table that's better herb seeds in there oh that's a nice idea isn't it growing your own herbs and veg and stuff I'm doing the same with I'm just going to press that crease out because that's going to be confusing raining in Mablethorpe Linda no now I need to make three curves. So I'm creasing this to make sure it's central. You can use your um, template, uh, sorry, the template that I suggest in your book. I'm just getting some chalk, that's what the rummaging around is. And you're going to draw a circle here. Again, you use a template, but I'm not going to for this. And then another shorter one at the side like that and again that's all explained in the book so let's cut around here I like the scallop shape I think it's a very dressy kind of look and around there so you've got that shape if you if you're sewing along let me just give you the measurements for that template as well um in here somewhere uh, um, the template draw curve seven inch so if you've got a, a plate a seven inch plate then that's going to be fine to draw the the first bit there um i, I do shape that 
made a few of these but it's been a while to be honest no i kept it straight there you go um then i'm going to use this as a template for the bit with the foam so i'll just draw around this shape like this this is a new live Anne. yes this is um the search press may day event look at that there was a needle on there picks everything up okay so let's cut around here a lot of lives today i tell you what my voice is going a bit getting a sore throat and so that will do. I think I'll just curve that around a bit more. Righty ho. One looked a little bit more curvy than the other. That's better. Okay, now I'm going to put the magnetic snap onto the flap at this point. The flap has the side that doesn't have the magnet, so that's the thin bit. Um, so you'll have a thin bit and a backing, and then you'll have a fat bit, which is the one with the magnet, and a backing for that as well. That's going to go on the bag. So I'm going to put this onto the lining side. I've already got my centre mark crease there, actually. And I'm going to mark where that's going to go, which will be about an inch from the bottom. So I've got a navy pen and navy fabric, so that's not going to work. So let me just see if chalk will do the trick. Yep. Then we'll make um, two tiny holes. I'm just going to put another piece of fabric on the back of this just to make it a little bit more stable. Because this is obviously going to be pulled open every time I go in the bag. And this is going to help it stay in place. So if you have... A little 505 spray or, or spray glue if you don't don't go out and you know buy any if you don't have any already but i'm just going to put a little bit of fabric over the back just to make that fabric a little bit thicker and then take your quick and pick and make a small hole over your mark make the hole smaller than you think you need scratch that in there because we don't want the hole too big so holes that are too small you can make bigger holes that are too big you've just got a big hole squish the legs out so that's how it's looking from the inside and then we'll sew these two right sides together and normally I wouldn't choose red thread but um, didn't have time to change it um, this is now getting rather thick so rather than using pins I'm going to just put a few clips to hold that in place. Easier than pinning on thick fabrics. Just one in the bottom. And there's my foot pedal gone. Let's sew all the way around. So I'm using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So carefully around the curves because this is going to create the shape of the flap of your bag. So we want that kept as neatly as possible. When you come up to the point, stop with the needle down, turn around and carry on sewing. And I'm using a 2.4 stitch, which isn't the smallest, but when you're sewing through thicker fabrics like this, you can find that it slows the machine down a little bit and your stitches become shorter. So it might help a little bit to just lengthen your stitch length. I'm, I normally sew it to 2.2. All the way round. And then back up to the top. And then we're going to snip into these pointy bits. So up to the stitches, but not through them. You could trim off some of the extra fabric if you wish. I don't think it's really necessary here. 
turn that through. I'm pretty sure that um, our books are available in South Africa, Lynette. Monica will be on it, no doubt, and get back to you. So I'm just going to give that a quick press. Because there's, there's a whole team working on this event, you know. So um, it's not just me on my own. There's a lot of overtime going on in the search press department today. That's the inside. That's a little bit puckered up, so we'll stretch that out and press it. This is why we snip into the into the points to give those points a nice, neat. That's better. Look. And a bit of a tip again: if you have any spray glue, use it. Just this is going to go inside there and that's going to hold the two pieces together. Not imperative, but you know, if you've got glues, then may as well use them. Then I'm going to press that bit again, that got creased again. I'm going to top stitch all around the edge. Actually, given more time, it might be quite nice to do some cross hatch quilting on here. But I'm just going to edge stitch here. So longer stitch again, because it's a top stitch. And actually this does look nice in red. So follow nicely around the curve, take your time on the curves. If you do need to stop, stop with the needle down. Up to here, nice big red button on the front. Oh, I'll do that afterwards. So around where the clasp is on the other side, that's why we don't put it too close to the edge. And back again. Oh yes, I should have done that, you know, that, it, given more time, I just think particularly with a plain fabric like this, a little bit of quilting would look really nice. Or, just to make it a little bit less plain, I could fussy cut maybe one of the boats out of here and uh, put a little bit of applique on it, that would look nice, wouldn't it? Okay, so that's my flap. We're now going to sew this to the back of the bag. So flip it over, right sides together. And make sure these are the same distance from each side. And I'm just going to top stitch that in place. So again, a couple of clips because there's uh, quite a lot of fabric going on here. And I'm still on a long stitch, I'm still on number three. And this is close to the edge so I don't see the stitches when I turn it the right side out. So keeping all this nice and smooth and flat. If you have a walking foot, then um, stick it on your machine at this point, and that'll help to stop the layers from shifting and okay, keeps your fabric nice and flat. So we have this. Gone cold now. And then the outer pieces are going to be saying, oh, need the darts in. Fancy for getting me darts. So these, these I should have done that before, uh, right sides together. Always sew a dart from the edge to the inside. That's where the dress making or your bag making. And I'm going to taper the end of the dart around very slightly so it doesn't quite go to a point. So up to there and then just round the corner and back stitch and the same on all of the pieces so both outer pieces and on both lining pieces so, and very slightly around and back so I've gone back along the actual dart if you can see that and and that's a nice shape bag look at that if I say so myself, let's fold this in half. Oh, decorative stitching would have been nice, wouldn't it, Jean? On, on the top stitching, maybe, instead of using a straight line, you could just use, um, I like the ones that look like flowers and vines or hearts would be nice as well. And this one, we need to do the same with the lining as well, so bear with me. We'll put the 
nothing together. more and then we're done on this bit weddings are going oh son's wedding on the 20th of march erica oh congratulations oh i hope it all goes okay my daughter was um going to be bridesmaid to her best mate last year that was cancelled it's going to be in italy um to this year and they've had to cancel it again so i don't know when they're getting married and uh, my my best mate's lad is uh was getting married July, they've postponed those till next year. Right, we're going to sew the two outer pieces right sides together all around the edge. And then before we put the lining in, I'm going to make up the strap just in case we run out of time. Because I don't know who's coming up next, but I don't want to be hogging the limelight when somebody else is waiting in the wings. So around we go, just matching the seams over the darts when i come to the darts i'm not fussed about pressing seams open or anything like that i press them in opposite directions just to keep them flat so all the way around the bottom again just using about a quarter of an inch seam allowance or i tend to use the edge of the foot round into the curve seams squished in opposite ways round you go and back to the beginning. It's okay, I thought it got a bit close. Oh, it did get a bit close to the edge. Just need to go back over this side again. That went a bit awry, because I'm rushing now, you see. You never rush when you're sewing. It's not a, it's not a race, is it? You can only sew as fast as your sewing machine will take you. Wish I had a faster one sometimes. Right, let's put that up there. Yeah, we need to go around that curve again. Do check your seams at this point, because if you do need to go over anything, then now's the time to do it. Let's turn it the right side out. so and I mean I've got little granddaughter as well so I'm just just want to see her all dressed up and hmm. anyway um, that's that and that's how we look it that makes a really nice bag doesn't it I love that fabric right what I'm going to do now is put the second half of the clasp on the outside so fold this over don't make it too tight because we've got a, a bit of a gusset on the side and make sure we're all nice and straight and symmetrical. And then I'm just going to put a mark where, whoops, the second half of the clasp is going to go under here. Just there. Give that a quick measure to make sure that it is in the middle. So that's what I say exactly in the middle, spot on. And then Take a quick unpick. Now I'm going to go through the bosal as well as the fabric so it's a little bit thicker and make your two little marks each side. And then the clasp goes on here. Did I go all the way through? Yes, I did. There we go. There it is. And popped it up on there nice isn't it monica i love this bag and it's a good size as well okay before i do the lining i'm going to make up the strap just in case we run out of time because i think i think i'm here till half past but i can't remember so can you let me know because i'll just carry on as a while right so we're here there's my long strap I'm going to fold in half all the way across. So I'm just making something that's a little bit like bias binding. This is the easiest way to make a strap. So my fabric's four inches wide and it's about 35 inches in length. So 
okay and then we'll fold each side of this to the center like this and then the whole thing in half again Oh, thank you, Monica. I can carry on then. So it just when you've, when you've had enough of me, just put a post on there saying, enough. <laughs> off you go. Pop off now. Sure. Because I'll just stop here all day. You know what it's like. Right. So again, fold both edges to the center. And then the whole thing in half again. To make a one inch wide strap. And I haven't put any um, interfacing or anything on this. I'm using a canvas type of fabric. So it's quite thick anyway. But if you start putting um, interfacings and certainly something as thick as Bosal, then um, you're not going to be able to get it through your slider. I'm going to make two little tabs each side. So I'm going to chop off about four inches of fabric. I can't remember what the instructions said, but that'll do. So that's for my tabs. Should have sewn it first, but there you go. And then on here, you're actually going to see the ends of the, um, of the strap. This isn't going to go into a seam. It's going to go into the slider. So I want to make a nice neat seam on here. So before I sew down the sides, machine in. I'm going to flip this over in the opposite direction. So I've got the raw edges on the end like that and line the flat end up so it's nice and neat and then we'll sew straight across. And then when you turn this over and push out that corner you get a really nice little seam across the end so i'll show you that again on the other end so i've pressed all my you know bits to the center fold in half and all that kind of malarkey we're going to turn that over the other way around make it nice and straight raw edges all together on the end and sew straight across There we go, thank you. Oh, thank you, Debbie Day. It is the second demo of the day today. I do run out of ideas sometimes, you know. Um, right, I'll snip that end off there. So again, you've got a nice, neat end. And then I'm simply going to sew along both sides. So this is top stitching, so lengthen the stitch again. So we've got a fair bit of sewing in straight lines now, which is kind of what sewing is really, isn't it? Sewing in straight lines. God. Thanks, Sam. Try to be helpful. There's things, little tricks and things, and I'm sure you're the same at home. I'm sure there's so many um, ideas and tips that you have um, that you'd love to share at some point, but things that you learn along the way and it's those penny drop moments, isn't it, where you think, oh, that's so easy. Why didn't I think of that before? But the thing is, until you show, you tend not to know. I love working things out, though. I don't know about you. Um, one of the, the, the best things I like about sewing is the maths behind it, which sounds a bit odd. But uh, like with this bag, working out how big those darts need to be, just to give it a bit of roundness, but not make it too fat. How long does the... Um, the flap have to be to look nice so it doesn't stop too short and look like a fringe that the hairdresser's got carried away with. That's what I like about it. And transforming something that's two dimensional into three dimensional. Right, so that's the long strap. Then I've got the two shorter tabs as well. These will go into a seam. That's what I'm here for, Sheila. If you can't do the maths, I'll do it for you. I love a bit of maths. Um, these are going into a seam, so I can just sew together without smartening off the end bits. Thanks, 
some under. There we go. So I've got two little tubs that look like this. That straight like that. Oh, cold coffee, nothing worse. And a mathematician. Oh, I don't know if I'd like it as a job. I like it in a bit of sewing, but I don't know about in a job. I've got my slider and two rectangle rings. So these little bits are going to go through my rectangle ring and they're going to be sewn facing downwards over the end here. <laughs> Angela, it was a few weeks ago now, in, in the Shaw household, um, and I think it's the same for a lot of people who work from home, you get up and the PC goes on before the kettle goes on in the morning, it's work right from the minute you wake up. Um, and I, I'm a really early riser, so I'm normally the first one up. And uh, Gary came downstairs. I'm just sat at the PC doing nothing. Um, and he says, "What's the matter?" I says, "I, I can't think of anything to sew." And he just went, "Oh, that's not good, is it?" <laughs> it gets like that sometimes. Don't you know what to sew? Um, so, I'm, so, I'm, so, so I'm just sewing the straps to that seam at the side just to hold those in place this is getting very thick fabric now I'm only using a universal needle on here I did go and get some spares just in case I broke one um, if you've got thick fabrics then maybe a denim needle would help and on very thick areas like this you can always turn the hand wheel if your machine's not going to cope with thick seams always turn the hand wheel towards you Right, so we have this. So two little tabs, one on each side, and that's where my strap is going to be attached. So you can really see how the bag's going to look now. Nice, isn't it? Now with the strap here, I'm going to, first of all, take one end through the slider. Let me trim that bit of thread off the end of that. So we're going to go through the middle, back out this side. And this is what I was saying about the ends being seen. So I'm going to overlap that by a couple of inches because I don't want to be trying to sew too close to this. And sew straight across here. It looks a bit longer actually. And I'll go backwards and forwards a few times to make that nice and strong. You can sew around in a square if you wish. Then I need another D-ring. Do I need another D-ring? Bear with me. Oh, no, we don't. I'm going to go through the D-ring here with this side that I've just sewn. So the end of the strap here facing upwards and make sure this isn't twisted. We're going to go through this uh, rectangle ring, sorry. Could be a D-ring. Back through the slider. This is where I'm saying about not using foam or interfacing on your straps. You could use maybe um, a fusible fleece, but I'd just use one strip, not use the whole like four inches of it. So that you're not going to get it through. And that goes back through again. So I've got a loop like that, and that's gone back through the slider. And then this end, make sure that it doesn't get twisted, is going to go through this ring. so that the end is on the underside, not on the top side, and also straight across there. Burn. 
behind you go. That's it. And that's the strap on. So we still need to put a lining in. We've got a bit of time, I think. Haven't been, haven't been kicked off yet. So that strap bit I'd normally do after, but um, I just wanted to get that out of the way just in case I run out of time. So I still need to sew the lining pieces right sides together. And this time I'll leave a turning gap in the bottom of about five inches or so I can get my hand through there and pull the bag through. So make sure these are right sides together and match up the, the darts and the set. So who's there? Thank you very much, Lynn. So nice and curvy around the curve. Show what I'm doing. There's the turning gap. So I don't bother measuring those. You can only gauge how big they need to be. And again, with the seams over the uh, the darts, I just squish those in opposite directions. And there we go. I like nautical things, Angie, as well. It's just... I, I, I love summer. I'm very much a summer kind of person. And when you see things nautical, I can always hear the waves crashing on the seas and freezing cold bubbly beaches. Don't care. Oh, Samantha lives by the seaside. Oh, you've got to have a nautical themed everything then, haven't you, Samantha? Um, okay. So these are going to now go right sides together. And the pockets I want to be on the back. So we'll drop the outside bag, and this is quite chunky now, inside the lining with the flap and the pockets matching. So my lining's inside out and my bag is the right side out. <laughs> it's Debbie J. Imagine. So it looks like it won't fit, but it will do. It's just because the, the outer bag is so chunky. And then we'll sew all the way around the top. Oh, Debbie's about 15 minutes from this. I'd love to live near the seaside. What do you think about um, seagulls? Oh, I'll do it inside out. Because as a visitor to the seaside, I love them. But locals tend to think they're like flying rats, don't you? I, I love the sound of them and pinching chips off, you, off your knee. I, I just... And they're huge, aren't they? But what's it like living with them? We did actually, we went on holiday um, a couple of years ago to um, Canva Sands. And the seagulls on the roof, I, I, that wasn't so nice actually. The crack of dawn, you could, they weren't noisy as in squawking, you could see them walking. They're heavy birds. I do love them. Anyway, just sewing all the way around the top. oh we had one I tell you um, <laughs> it, it was it was quite funny but it was quite scary as well my, we were my, my son used to live in Brighton and me and my daughter went down there Kim was driving and uh, we were driving through Brighton and this uh, a seagull just we were going very slowly and <laughs> we got my son's dog we were taking my son's dog home that was it so the window was very slightly open in the back seat and the dog was sat there and the seagull hit the windscreen and almost kind of ran down the side of the car. It's huge. Um, and as it went past the open window, but the dog's going rah, 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 past the window as it went past. It was it was actually quite funny. But yeah, that could, if we were going at speed, that could have broken the windscreen. They're, they're really big things, aren't they? Okay, this is getting very bulky going this way, but I'm just concentrating on where I'm sewing, so not bothered about what's going on over here. Matching up the side seams. Oh, oh, 
Ah, c'est chiant. Ah, t'es ça, il m'a enlevé. Oups. Couldn't, I mean, love them or loathe them, I couldn't bear to see an animal suffer. All right. Over that side seam again, squishing the seams. That needs a bit of help. In the opposite direction. And here you go. This all's all good, isn't it? And back to the beginning. So we have this. And then we'll turn the whole thing the, ring, the right side out. Do you know, Jim, we, um, I, was, I was saying earlier, we've got so many birds in the garden now, which is lovely. And the bossiest ones, kind of as you'd expect, really, are robins. They'll see anybody off. Um, and the most timid ones are actually the pigeons, although they're the biggest. Any little sparrow can shoo a pigeon off. Love the birds, though. Um, right, just turning all of this through a very small hole that I left. And again, this is where the bag's going to be very creased up. But because I don't know about other foams, I know there's an other manufacturers do foams, but I've only used Bosal and I really like it. So I know that the creases are going to drop out. <laughs> Should have made a bigger hole there. Okay, so that's come through like so. Oh, thanks, here's that. Um, that. That was, I'm going to sew the, the whole cut. I'd normally use the right colour thread for this, but you know. In my last um, fabric range was all birds, and they were all the birds that we see in the garden there as well. So we've got um, chaffinches, the thrushes on there, starling. You don't see many starlings these days. Um, the, the pigeons on there, I love them. They will be making another appearance in fabric that I've got coming out later on in the year, actually. It's called Birds and Bobbins. And it's birds with sewing machines and bobbins and scissors and stuff. So there's the bag. There's my pocket which goes on the back. That is pushed inside there. I'm going to give that a press because I'm going to top stitch around the top. I'm folding the bows all over because I didn't trim it into the seam. I haven't thought about doing paisley actually. Jean, that might be a nice idea. I tend to have kind of animal themes going on with, with my fabric so, so there'd have to be some kind of creature in there too. Oh, thank you, Janet. So I post pictures, weren't you, when you made your bags? And again, just pulling that lining inwards so that the seam is on the edge. That's going to make it a bit easier for top stitching, I think. Take him out of water. And into the sides. You can't really see what I'm doing there, can you? And that side. So I'm literally just pulling the seam up onto the top so I can... Come here, sew all the way around it. Cats? Yeah, I've got cats and dogs. That's next year, actually. I've only just come up with those designs. Cats and dogs. Um, right, now I'm going to top stitch. I'll do that from the inside as well, actually. So I'll just find it easier. So again, longer stitch for top stitching. And I need to, again, pull the lining fabric away so that I can keep this nice and flat. And I'm stitching the width of the foot. Can you see that away from the seam? Now this is going to be very thick when I get to the strap, so I might have to turn the hand wheel. So always stop with your needle down, let's move the strap out of the way, and over this bit. So I'm just going to take it easy because I don't want to break a needle and that is thick fabric. Oh, 
Oh, not too bad. And you go out the way that way. Seam on the top. You could trim the um, the bosal back if you find it easier, but it's quite easy to sew through when it's folded. Um, I think it needs the top stitching though because it will want to unfold. I'm having none of that nonsense. So just coming back up to the flap. Now you can't see a thing, can you? Slowly over there. Yes, done it. And this isn't a particularly powerful machine, but it's done the job okay. Right. One final um, press before I show you the finished bit. And I'm well press. I'm not going to press it flat. I'm just going to give this a nice blast of steam. And that's enough to get the creases out on this. Inside flap. Outside flap. I have got a couple of splashes of water on there, so. And there's my bag finished. So inside again, we've got the, the two, let me show you on this one. You've got your two patch pockets, so that's somewhere nice and handy to keep your keys. I don't know about you, the bag that I use most of all doesn't have any pockets in it at all. And you lose so much stuff in the bottom. And it's normally the thing, you know, like your car keys that you need now. Or your phone's ringing and you can't actually see it. So that's quite handy having those in there. And that goes over there. It is a good size, isn't it, Angie? It's, it's, I think it's the kind of style that looks like... Um, an evening bag but it's it's actually a really decent size you know you could have that as a work bag you can fit lots of stuff in it um, thank you very much <laughs> thank you Samantha available from search press Amazon and all good bookstores don't you know don't forget you've got discounts on the um, on the search press website though um, so that's one of the projects again that's the book that it's come from it's a half yard summer collection um, where well, I just want to make sure I don't miss any comments before we go. Um, it is a compilation. I've had a, uh, only two people out of thousands, but only two people have people come back and say, well, I've already got those projects because I've got all your books. These are taken from other books apart from the five new ones that are on the front. So as long as you're aware of that. Um, but every single project, and there are 14 here altogether, um, uses less than half a metre of fabric. That uses less than half a metre of fabric. I may have been a little, what's the word? There's less than half a metre of fabric for the outside and less than half a metre for the inside, but I think I can get away with that because it's such a nice bag. Snip those threads off. Well, it's been lovely to have your company today. Thank you for joining me. And um, I hope you enjoy making your bag. Don't forget to show pictures. And I hope you enjoy um, the rest of your day. I shall see you again very, very soon. Bye-bye. Take care.